Okay, I'm back. So today I'm going to show you some upgraded stuff for a 48 RE out of a Dodge uh, Cummins uh, dually truck. And uh, we also are going to upgrade the input from Sonax. We're going to show you the difference of why people go with this input shaft over a factory shaft. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good deal actually. Um, it's a little, little pricey, but the trade-off is not breaking the shaft. And I'm going to show you one that's got a broke shaft or the shaft out of one. But um, it's going to be interesting. I'll show it to you. It's, it's kind of cool. Just kind of base your rebuilds. And when this transmission done, this is going to be the equivalent of some of these higher dollar trannies that you buy from these, hey, like ATS and all them guys, you know, Rev Max kind of stuff. But anyway. Okay. So what we are looking at is a 48 RE input shaft with drum. All right. So a little bit of... Um, tech talk I guess you could say the differences between certain things well in this situation it is the Sonax input versus a factory all right so you've got two right here there's a Sonax and there's a factory 48 you can see the size of the shaft is different right off the bat where I'm where, where I'm filming you can see the difference of the shaft all right now you got to understand the Sonax shaft is a one piece. Everything's made as one. So there's no chances of splines coming loose, wearing out and shaft coming loose, whatever. There's, there's no chance of any of that. One big hunk of steel that they milled down and perfected it. All right. Now it's made out of 300 M steel, which is some really good steel. Well, Rev, Rev Max, everybody makes one, but I'm using the Sonax in this application, but I'm going to show you one that failed. That was a factory. Check this bad boy out. Look at it. It broke right down where the oil supply for the torque converter lock up. You can see it. You know the old saying, you will find the weak link. Well, that's one of them. Now, the big deal about the one piece versus the two piece, they make a lot of good options for two piece too. I mean, in this case, I'm using the Sonax one piece, but I've used the Rev Max two piece and another brand, uh, you know, but anyway, they're good products too. But the money difference in this application, my customer chose to go with this boy right here. Now look right here. You can see the differences right off the rip, right down in this area, right here. See how, it's, see how it's one piece of machine? Let me get my um, pick, I'll show you. Right down in here. Look over here. That's where it's pressed, right down here. Now, when you pick it up, you can see where the shaft is pressed into the center of the drum. Okay? So the Sonax, it's all one piece. It's billet. I'm telling you what they they machine these things and it's it's incredible the, the quality of workmanship that goes into Sonex parts. And as you can see on this one, you can actually see the the crack right here. It twisted when that lockup applied, that shaft could not, it just couldn't hang in there, and it was so aggressive it just snapped the shaft right off. Well, if you were able to look down inside this new shaft and really get a good bird's eye view inside of it, it's really hard to see, but the wall thickness is a little bit fatter too. So they address that. And then if you can look right here, look right here, see this amount of area right here. And look right here. See, see if I can get them side by side right there. See. That one's cut down just a little bit more. But that's the one difference that's gonna be made into this transmission. Okay, a few more improvements on this uh, 48RE. We're gonna put a DNJ, check it out, DNJ components. We're gonna put their Governor Pressure uh, solenoid conversion kit in. As you can see, the housing is billet, and they do that because they have to put a bigger GM type 
solenoid in this thing. Look how massive that thing is. That's huge compared to the factory. So there's the factory one. And I'm trying to get you a good view here. As you can see how big one is over the other. And the duty cycle of the GM type is greater than the factory. Now, they do offer one for the factory that I put in my, in my uh, gas uh, 47s and 46s. But the, uh, it's bigger also. It's Borg Warner, as you can see right here. Borg Warner. This is what it looks like. This is your factory replacement upgrade. And even it's bigger than the original. See the size difference? And it's a direct plug and play to the factory harness. There's, there's no difference there. But because of the GM style, they have to give you a pigtail to make it work. And that's great. Then you also want to, the second gear band, you want to replace the, uh, the band strut. This is folded over with the ears on the side right here. It it's makes, it's more rigidity. It won't fold over easy. And they make a solid one. Sonic's got a solid one. This is a superior product. Those work just fine. Now this is Sonic. This right here is the uh, Sonic second gear super hold uh, servo kit. Red anodized, look at the double ring set up right here. Got two rings. Man, I'll tell you what, this is a this is a really good kit. I've used them several, several times. And of course they give you the, the pin that goes in the center of that thing right there. So but um, that's what that is right there. It's a really good upgrade. And then the, the, the band strut is superior. And here's the dead. Superior band strut. And then the DNJ will be that right there, DNJ. Uh, DCF1. Okay. Of course, we're upgrading the overdrive piston, the apply piston. Um, Bearing support, ply piston, it's, it's, it does a multitude of different things, but double oiling, double uh, feed holes. There's a feed hole there and a feed hole there. And if you're not knowing when look, what you're looking at, I'll show you right here. It's cut out, machined out, so this cavity fills it with pressurized oil. And then the other side has it too. The factory does not do this. Look. Okay, here's the factory one why I replace them. Notice there's only, there's one. Look on the other side. None. And there's not even an O-ring down here to seal it in the case. This one has an O-ring cavity right there. Trade-off to this thing also is got a new little uh, check valve, little air valve right here, a little orifice. It's already installed. You don't have to worry about it. But you also have double oiling on the shaft inside this thing too. See right there's one, right there. And then there's the other, see it? This one only has one. Let me show you. Right there it is, see it? There is not one on the other side. That's probably why that one scored up pretty good. Just, it's lack of lubrication. Another thing I do is I will take the case and I will drill this case out for oil back here at the Sprag. You won't be able to see it real easy, but let's see if I can get in there. You can't can't really see it, but I, I drill a small pile, a little small. What size is this? Like two millimeters? It's it's really small. I mean, it's just enough to let it oil. The sprag in the back of the uh, transmissions case, because if that that one-way roller, lack of lubrication, it heats everything up. But as you can see, as a whole, um, we're doing some serious modifications. Of course, going to put the Kevlar line reverse band in this thing. Here's the band for that. Kevlar line, and then we're gonna put a new Kevlar line front band. 
and a nice superior kit to create to uh, keep all the line pressures correct. One other thing I, will, I want to mention though, when you're doing this, in the back, there is a fiber washer that sits on this. Let me show you. This is a fiber plastic washer. They fail quite often. It goes right here, and it's held on with a snap ring. And this goes through the back of the case. I always replace it with this metal one. Always replace it. Just a nice little little piece of insurance. But there it is. We're gonna upgrade it with the Sonic stuff, some Superior stuff, some DNJ stuff, and that's on a 48 RE going into a dually. Okay, the last piece of this puzzle is the clutches, and I'm gonna run with Ray Bestus GPZs. It's a full kit, obviously. It's, a, it's called a friction module, but you can see it's got a different type of color to the material, more of a greenish gray. They're kind of semi semi uh, metallic. As you can see them, they kind of shine a little bit, got sparkles in them. Anyway, that's what they look like. So here's the part number right here. See, GPZ 16. And here's what they say on the actual clutch. Look at that, GPZs. All of them do. They're, it's the, it's the, you know, an upgrade for the 48 REs. It's a good, good balance for um, gripping power and durability. These are, these are really good clutches. Kind of expensive, but they work pretty good. Okay, so there you go. That's the stuff that uh, we put in and a little bit more upgrades, but you could do this at the house if you wanted to. I mean, you don't have to pay me or pay anybody else, but if you have the right stuff to do it, then that's one thing. But these are the upgrades to look for and ask for if, if you're looking to build something that's gonna be strong enough to pull cattle trailers and work your truck a little bit. But now take in mind, you know, just because you're upgrading some of the vulnerable parts in it, doesn't mean you go out there and beat the crap out of it, treat it like it's a 5.0 Mustang. Come on now, it's still a 10,000 pound truck, for Pete's sakes. It's not a drag car. Um, yes, they make them so you can do that, but everyday driving, you gotta find the balance between how strong, how violent you need to make it shift and work over really working it. Remember that, there's a balance to everything. Can you go get a eight second, nine second uh, quarter mile car and drive it every day? Now, I know Drag Week is, is out there and I know guys have proven they do, but they're doing other things. They're not building a dedicated car for one thing, just like these trucks. You know, so you gotta find the balance. This stuff that's in, inside this one, it's a good balance of strength and durability. And you're not compromising what the transmission can do and deliver. Until next time, just an honest man running an honest business.